The A10 Mini and the A10 Mini Pro are great devices. However, since their release, there's been a lot of conversation and some not too positive ones surrounding, you know, Blackmagic's choice as it relates to audio, whether it's the input, you know, them using, you know, the 3.5 millimeter jack or just kind of the way, the fact that there's no headphone output so you can actually monitor the audio. If you stick around to the end of the video, I'm gonna show you a small little hack, a very simple hack on how you can monitor your audio from the A10 Mini or the A10 Mini Pro. And we're also gonna spend a little time just going through the settings so I can make sure that you have the best possible audio settings for your A10 Mini. Let's talk about it. Hey, what's going on party people and thanks for tuning in to another video. For those watching for the first time, my name is Walter Jeanette, founder and creative director of Create, Inspire, and Solve. And on this channel, you can expect to find inspiration and solutions that are gonna help you build a better brand, grow your business, and also help you create a community around the things that you are most passionate about. So again, thanks for watching. Feel free to hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Go ahead and click that bell so you can be notified every single time that I post new content to the channel. But let's get into today's topic. All right, so what you're looking at right now is we're inside of the ATEM software control, okay? All right, so, and we're specifically on the audio tab. So yours may not default to this. Um, some of you may end up on Switcher. Some of you may end up on media. Some of you may end up on audio. Some of you may end up on camera. All right, we're specifically talking about audio today. So again, just look down here at the bottom for the audio tab and that's where we are. So for my particular use case right now, I have my Rodecaster Pro actually outputting into the A10 Mini, all right? Um, so we just kind of discussed as far as the connections that you will use. Some of you, um, especially in a live production setting, or a lot of you that use this for ministry inside of church or a faith-based organization, you may be running an output, an aux output uh, from your mixer going directly into one of the mic inputs. And again, we can get into balanced, unbalanced, all of those different types of things, but um, not really necessary for today's conversation. Okay, so I just wanted to kind of show you a couple of things here and to keep in mind. So as you can see, every single camera, every single HDMI source that's connecting to the A10 Mini Pro has their own microphone input. Right now, those are turned off, you know, so you do have the ability to control and turn those on down here. You can see over here, I have mic one and mic two, and then I also have the master output. So again, I can turn those on and off. And even when they're off, you can see um, those meters are still moving right here, um, but they're not being captured. That just tells me that there is audio coming through. And you can do this physically on the A10 Mini Pro. There's an on and off button, or you can turn them on in the actual software. So typically, I just use mic two off because um, I'm only using mic one. So again, visually, you kind of see what's going on here. And then you have your faders where you can adjust everything. And, um, you know, it's showing you your pan, you know, if you want to pan left and right. Again, depending on your use case, if you're using, you know, mono um, or if you're using studio to kind of record um, well, not necessarily record or to capture your audio, that really depends on you. And again, we won't necessarily get into that conversation, but I really wanted to just kind of show you, number one, if you've never really paid attention to this before, what the audio tab looks like. OK, now, secondly, let's jump over here in some settings because the there, there are two crucial settings you definitely make sure you need to check okay all right let's look at the actual settings all right so what you want to do is look over here in the left hand corner um, of the software control you want to click on the cog wheel and here you have your settings so again you want to make sure you're on the audio tab and you have two main settings here um, you can either split your audio into two separate mono channels or you can leave them as the same. So I'm gonna pull this over so you can see. So right now I have mine split um, into two separate channels. If I turn that off, it goes back to just that one channel, all right? So you can see it just goes back to that one channel um, and I have that uh, stereo left and right. But let's say for instance, if I wanted a safety channel, um or you know specifically especially in a recording environment if i wanted to save the channel or say you have something like the rode wireless go 2 where you can have two mics 
um, on one receiver. So you can have two mics on one receiver um, and then one person is on one, one person is on the other. And I'm making sure I capture that instead of getting a stereo mix of both, I can kind of control that here with the Rode Wireless Go 2. Okay, so um, usually if I'm, in a, if I'm in a live production environment, especially in church, I'm gonna leave this unchecked. But if I'm just say, if I'm doing an interview or something like that and I'm capturing two people, I'm at one time and I'm getting one mix, then I may separate that. All right, and then over here, this is probably the most crucial. Right now, I'm coming out from a mixer. So I wanna make sure that my mic inputs are set to line level. I wanna make sure that they are set to line level. If you're using microphones, you wanna use either the microphone plus or you wanna use microphone typically microphone but again i'm using the mixer so a lot of you if you're using in a production space maybe in a uh, church space you're probably going to be using line level because you may be running a, a dedicated aux coming out from your mixer most of you probably have digital mixers like the midas or the behringer x32 or the wing or you know preson or something like that and you're going to run that those of you who aren't using the usb channel because you may be recording or something like that using that but this will run dedicated aux going out here to your live stream and you want to make sure that it says line level if it says microphone then your levels um as a matter of fact if i switch this to microphone it's going to be way too hot all right it's going to be way too hot so i want to make sure that i'm going to line level so I can get the proper outputs coming in. And people may say, well, Walt, you're using a microphone. Well, I'm using a microphone that's going into a mixer. Again, I have the Rodecaster Pro connected. It's going into a mixer. So I don't want to use microphone just because I'm talking on the microphone because you see what happens. I want to make sure that that says line level so I can keep everything clean, all right? So those are your main settings right there. The next thing I want you to take a look at that I'm not sure if you noticed or not is each input, each microphone input, you have the ability to dictate your EQs and your dynamics, EQ and dynamic. This really comes in handy, especially when you have music, live music in a church space, concert space. Some of you may notice that even though you've done a great job of doing your EQ on your mixer or on your board, it still may not be coming through the string the way that you want to hear it. And so sometimes you have to dictate um, the mixer. You want to get an EQ that just sounds good and is perfect. Then you may need to change your EQ and dynamic specifically for the string. And, and we can have that conversation later on what are the best settings, you know, depending on Facebook, YouTube, or whatever platform you're streaming to. But you have to keep in mind, most people may be listening to uh, uh, live streams on their phones. They may be using headphones, they may not be. So you kind of have to find a happy medium on how do I want to EQ that? And you get to do that on each, any, like I said, any of the channels that are available and also on that master output. So let's take a look at that. So again, you can see it here, EQ Dynamics. All you do is simply click on it. So you simply click on it. And like I said, I'm not an audio engineer. So you know what I'm saying? Don't, don't, don't come for me. <laughs> <laughs> on my settings Th these are things that you know work in you know with our front of house engineer and then our streaming engineer because uh, at church we do have two um working with them you know what are going to be some of the best settings overall for our stream you know and like i said some some low pass high pass you know just kind of rounding off those things um cutting you know mid just a little bit um a little boost in the high a little boost in the low just enough to kind of give that that additional presence to the stream and like I said, if you want to take a screenshot to try these out, you can take a look at that there. Um, I have the same actually on the master output. So again, you can actually change the EQ to your, from your master output from your actual mic input. It just depends on what your configuration is. All right, and then aside from that, we have your dynamics. So this is where your, your compression, your limiters, if you're using an expand or a gate, this is where all of those things come in handy. And so, like I said, luckily you see um, compression is not, we don't have too much compression going on right now because I'm just talking. Um, if I was in church, um, you're gonna see that move 
um, just a little bit differently <laughs> uh, because we're pretty much at, at about halfway and sometimes I'll play with that. It just depends on how much I want it to be compressed or not. And then we have some makeup gain um, going on over here, you know, so I can make sure that I'm getting um, if you if you if, if you ever want to stay in the green on your mic inputs, but you want a little more ump coming out for your stream. This is and you don't want to, you know, bother your sound engineer. This is where you can make up that difference by playing around um with that makeup game right there and then we set that to a negative 10 sometimes i may negative 12 negative 10 that's always kind of the sweet spot for me i want to make sure it's hitting somewhere around negative 12 or negative 10 db and uh yeah and that's how you set that up and the last thing you want to make sure that you're doing is that you want to save these settings so anybody that knows you know the atem mini pro does not have an off button so pretty much unless you've, you know, set up a situation to configure it, to turn it off. Either way, if you turn it off, it doesn't save the settings. So what you can do, what I would hate for you to go through all the headache, getting all of this set up, and then you come back, plug up your A10 mini the next day and you're like, wait a minute, none of this looks the same. So this is the last thing I want to show you. You want to go to file and then you actually want to go to save as. Now, right now, mine is on auto save. I don't trust that. So you want to go to save as. All right. And then you see, y'all already have a profile here. So I'm going to name another one, a 10 mini pro EQ. Um, and we'll just put today's date because again, I'm always kind of playing around with this, trying to find the best settings. And like I said, I don't need to do anything specifically for the switcher keys, any of that. That's not, that's not going to apply. So I'm, I'm going to, um, I'm going to get rid of all of that and you can leave it on if you want to. It's just for me specifically. I don't want anything to do with that. All right. And the only thing I'm going to leave checked is the audio mixer. So I could have just did select all select none and then just make sure um, that my audio is the one that's actually selected and I'm going to click save. And then what happens is if you ever turn off and come back, you need to go back to file and then you need to go to restore. Then you can pull up the profile that you just saved. And it's going to show you the only thing that I'm opening here is the audio mixer. And there goes restore and it goes back to normal. So hopefully that gives you a rundown um, of audio and how you kind of manage your audio going on with the ATEM software control. So of course, one of the biggest gripes that people have with the A10 Mini Pro is that you're unable to mod. There's no headphone jack, so you're basically unable to monitor the audio directly from the A10 Mini Pro. All right. So, couple of solutions that you can actually use if you're utilizing the A10 Mini Pro like I do, where you're using what they call the webcam or the USB-C output. I'm outputting that into the Ecamm Live software. So what happens is I have the ability to actually monitor my audio from Ecamm Live from the software, okay? So from my computer, that's number one. Number two, the A10 Mini Pro also has an HDMI output, all right? So I can take that HDMI and I can actually run that into another, like I do into another recorder and that has a headphone jack. So either something like the Atomos Ninja or I, you may run it into another Mac or something like that and record with QuickTime, which I, you know, I do that from time to time. Headphone jack there, I can monitor the audio there. Well, let's just say you're in a crunch. One thing you can do is actually open up QuickTime. And then if you go to QuickTime, go to file and then go to new audio recording. You're going to see this right here. What I can do is go in here click on this and select black magic design. So then if I have headphones connected to my actual computer, or if I have monitors, you know, studio monitors, and I'm in a controlled space where it's not going to create any echo or anything like that. All I have to do is turn this up and then I'm going to be able to monitor the audio that's coming out. What happens is a lot of times we on, we monitor the audio coming directly from the mixer. 
and then we say hey the, the audio on the stream sounds a little bit different again if you've gone in and you've set eq and dynamics or anything in your levels you need to be able to monitor the, the audio that's coming from the a10 mini and not necessarily your mixer or whatever the sound source is so you have two different sets of audio you need to monitor it how it's coming in and then you need to check how it's coming out. And so this is the way, this is a quick little hack on how you can actually check that audio coming out of the eight ten minutes so you know what it sounds like to everybody that's watching your live stream production. So I'm hoping you were able to get some value out of that. I'm hoping you're a little bit more confident when it comes to the audio and the A10 Mini or the A10 Mini Pro. Same thing, same rules are gonna apply for the A10 Mini Extreme as it relates to the audio settings. Um, and again, like I said, I know a lot of people kind of gripe about this, but again, I just wanted to be able to provide a little bit of insight and input that hopefully helps you kind of navigate and get control of your audio in a live production space. But again, if you like the video, definitely you can hit that like button. For those of you who are watching for the first time and you wanna see more content like this, please feel free to hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Go ahead and click the bell so you can be notified every single time I post this type of content to my channel. But until next time, I'll catch you guys in the next video.